Congresswoman Elhan Omar. She's not backing down from the controversy over these comments about the 9-11 terror attacks. Here's the truth. Far too long, we have lived with the discomfort of being a second-class citizen. And frankly, I'm tired of it. And every single Muslim in this country should be tired of it. <laughs> CARE was founded after 9-11 because they recognized that some people did something and that all of us were starting to lose access to our civil liberties. Freshman Democratic lawmakers now rushing to Omar's defense. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez attacking the New York Post for responding to Omar with this cover. Watch. Printing on the front page to circulate all around New York City an image that is incredibly upsetting and triggering for New Yorkers that were actually there and were actually in the radius that woke up one morning or were in their schools and didn't know if they were going to see their parents at the end of the day to elicit such an image for such a transparently and politically motivated attack on Ilhan. This is, we are getting to the level where, the, where this is an incitement of violence against progressive women of color. And Rashida Tlaib also claiming Omar is being unfairly targeted. They do this all the time to us, especially women of color. They do that. They take our words out of context because they're afraid because we speak truth. We speak truth to power. This is just pure racist act by many of those, hateful acts by those, because she does speak truth when it talks about different issues that they don't disagree with. And I'm really outraged. One of the first people to come out against Omar's comments is Congressman Dan Crenshaw, who lost an eye fighting terrorists in Afghanistan. AOC facing new backlash for this Twitter attack on the decorated war hero, telling him to, quote, go do something about domestic terrorism. Omar also dragging President George W. Bush into the controversy with this tweet. The people and the people who knocked these buildings down will hear all of us soon. Was Bush downplaying the terrorist attack? What if he was a Muslim? So a lot to unpack here. Greg, let me start with you in terms of what George W. Bush was sending a warning to the terrorists. Yeah, she's not very good about uh, Jesse is the king of what about isms. She's the worst at it. That was a terrible what that was a terrible what about ism. Yeah, look, it didn't work. Look, here here's her problem. She's too casual about something that everybody takes really seriously. She, let's assume that she knows that 9-11 is a bad thing. I think she does. The problem is she's interested in more interested in what happened afterwards. And what that does is by shifting the emphasis and the priority to that, it makes it seem like she cares less about 9-11. And she, the weird thing I think that I, I find troubling and persistent because she's made this mistake a number of times is that she finds an attachment to the never forget element kind of tiresome. It's like when she was, she was uh, critiquing people about the way they say Al Qaeda mm -hmm. and how they over dramatize it. It was like she was saying that you place too much importance on the threat of terror because in her mind, the real importance is about her as a victim. And so even here, when they're talking about like, you, bet, you better not criticize her because she could become a victim of something. It's like, well, we could just say the same thing about the very criticisms you say about us. It is interesting to watch how, like, Congressman Dan Crenshaw and AOC and the other, like, they go back and forth on Twitter, and it's kind of strange, but kind of good to see the fight. Yeah, I, I don't think she's fighting fair because she blames every attack on her being a black female Muslim refugee instead of actually addressing what she said. To Greg's point, I think the impression that she was giving off was she cared more and thought that Islamophobia was a bigger right. threat than radical Islam. And no one actually believes that. I, I don't think she's a hero. I also don't think she's a victim. I think she's a below average talent who doesn't have the sen <laughs> sensibility to survive very much longer in Congress. She's a lightning rod. How do you know that? I don't <laughs> think she's going to last. I'll tell you why. Because she's already on double secret probation. And she's it three like months a low in. intelligent in, uh, individual. And, you know, and I think if, it was, if she wasn't friends with AOC, the rest of her caucus would just cast her aside because she's not worth the you trouble. She's one of the first two Muslim women in Congress that are going to cast her aside. Give me a break. She's been much more of a headache than she she's been an asset. She didn't to minimize what happened. Well, she was very dismissive about 9-11, and a lot of people take that very seriously, especially the newspaper in Manhattan. 
And if any newspaper is going to put that on the front page, I think the New York Post has complete license to do that. What I don't like is that she never really acknowledges what she says once she's attacked. She says, you're only attacking me because of my identity, not what I actually said. And that's like playing sports against someone. They're always complaining to the ref. You know, they're getting dominated play after play after play, and they're always whining to the referee. She just does not have the talent, I don't think, to stand you, in the ring and fight. This is not whining when she's being attacked. Like, this is an existential threat. She's getting death threats. What's an existential threat? She's getting death threat? threats on a daily Wait, basis. What is now? Waldo, we all get death threats. When, when you, <laughs> I get them. <laughs> when you... Uh, the bar is low. Some people deserve them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, the bar is no, low now. Deserves, I am, I'm, a social New media. I'm a New Yorker. President Trump I understand. death threats every day. Yeah. As a New Yorker, I understand you speak with solemn hush tones when you talk about 9-11. I, I lost uh, friends and neighbors on 9-11. I get it. It is awful. 343. Three cop, uh, firefighters, 71 cops. I get it. It's a mass murder, a mass grave downtown. She doesn't have the glibness, the the uh, the language uh, the, of a veteran who knows that uh, this is the proper response when you're talking about something as horrific, as traumatic as 9/11 that that screwed up all of our lives for the uh, uh, for the worse. I think that she really this this is beginning to sound a lot like when the my first presidential election, 1960, uh, Kennedy being attacked because he was Catholic. Uh, and uh, they said he's going to have allegiance to Rome rather than to uh, to the United States. Uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, I, I, I smell the same stink. But that's here. Though, if but that's this was opinion. a white guy saying this, a, a white, straight, male, Christian, freshman, Democrat, congressman, you don't think the Republicans would be running up the score on something yeah. like that? I think They'd it's, be doing a, the I exact think it's a gotcha. Same thing. It's a gotcha. I mean, let her learn on the job. Give yes. her a break, Justin. Well, well, let her evolve. This. Steep learning curve so, already. Uh, a couple of things. One, let me, I'll ask, let Emily you respond to this. Uh, to go after President George W. Bush, right? Like, of all people in a position of power, the leader of the free world at that time went out of his way to make sure that it was clear that he did not think that all Muslims were terrorists. That's what he meant. And when he was talking about them, like those people, well, he's talking about the actual people who perpetrated the act. Well, that's why I think all, uh, yes, and why so many of these statements are so false. It's based on such a lack of education of the entire situation. And what frustrates me is reducing, it's hiding the ball. It 100% is whining to the refs. It's 100% being a distraction because I don't see it as, some, as afraid to speak truth to power. It's pure racist. These are comments from freshman congresswomen. Why, when do they become empowered? When will they actually write legislature? Because guess what? We are their bosses, and that's what, they're, what they are there to do. And I think especially um, the attack on, to me, that is an attack on Representative Crenshaw when he served his country for 10 years, literally right. gave, life, gave limb for it, and he is supposed to somehow how be the butt of their attacks in terms of, oh, do more. He's the one also that reached across the aisle to average Americans when he was attacked publicly and he kind of demonstrated that olive branch extension mm -hmm. that I'm not seeing from On these Saturday other lawmakers. Yeah. Exactly. The other thing the is other in channel. terms of like, I, I understand that she's young. I can get that. But you know what? She won an election. She is in a position of leadership and power and there's responsibility with that. And I, I have spoken on the record my entire career, sometimes on behalf of other people, most in the last 10 years for myself. I can remember one time where I was taken out of context. And the reason for that is because I'm thoughtful about what I'm going to say. Every week she complains about being taken out yeah. of context. But you are, you are thoughtful. Hold it a second. You are thoughtful. But you know what the difference is? Here, for the first time in history, you have two Muslim women in the Congress of the United States. They carry an enormous burden. It's not just their personal lives or their districts. They're, they're representing 4 million, 5 million Muslims in the United States. There's a lot there. There's a lot of responsibility there. They're, they're growing in the job. It is, so they have it a great is difficult platform. for them. They and have a what, great and platform. And what are they using their platform for? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't yeah. see religion. So I don't, right. I, I actually resent, when I like, I don't, all I, I just listen to the words. I will say this in, on her behalf. She's guilty of what a lot, a lot of us do when we're in front of a friendly audience. We just get casual. Mm. She has to learn that her audience isn't as casual anymore. She has a diverse group of people out there. People like J Jesse and Geraldo and Emily and what's your name again, Dana? <laughs> and, and so it's, it's not just gonna be care. Like you can talk like that in front of care, but you... <laughs> I can't believe is that. Care calling? Is that your mother? Oh, care calling. Mom, I told that you that has never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Congresswoman Omar, I'm very sorry. <laughs> you know what? Oh, I'm going to have to go yes. roll the song. Oh